welcome to a quick update. Well, we'll see about the quick part of my east side shelf while I still have it on the east side before it needs to get moved. Just misting down my little bare rooting kind of hybrid kind of growing bandaceous orchids here because it is a little bit warmer than normal and extremely dry. Anyway, I have a lot going on on these shelves. There's three to go through. Don't worry, I will not bore you with all the minutia details of all the orchids on these shelves, but there are some things going on I would love to document and show you. So if you're so inclined to stick around and join me on the noisy east side, thank you for being here. Let's have a look-see as to why specifically today I am going to be showing you some of the orchids back here. And I can remove my Neostylus here. We saw that one recently and expose Erenantande Sunrise. Never bloomed for me, this orchid. Looks really, really rough and scraggly. I don't have the heat to keep it going. It always goes into a stall mode and it takes a while for it to pick back up. But one thing I am really happy that it is constantly doing and that is producing roots. <laughs> At least that. The rest of the orchid was attacked by scale so I lost a new fan here this season. The other two baby fans seem to be holding on okay. But yeah, even though it hasn't bloomed for me, this orchid remains in my collection <laughs> because hey, you can't deny that it's trying with all the roots that it's growing. I just have to keep a constant eye on it and make sure that at least I can tide it over until circumstances improve. This is my Chrysnetia green light in a broken pot. No need to repot it, <laughs> basically, because I'm just happy that most of the roots this season have gone into the pot, so that makes it a bit stronger. Very surprised that it hadn't bloomed for me yet, but I have a teeny tiny spike on a new fan that it started growing like two years ago, so... <laughs> At least there's that. The main fan right up here lost a lot of leaves this season and it hasn't bloomed for me. I don't see any other spikes coming up, but you know what? It's doing okay considering what it has to deal with and it's got lots and lots of secondary fans already starting out. So maybe it was focusing on that this season as opposed to giving me blooms from the main fan. It's nice to see that one of the cakey fans at the base here is finally mature enough to bloom. Forgive me for not shifting my Fred Clark Yara after Dark Black Pearl. The, the <laughs> Stutter. The orchid is doing great after its two divisions were taken off of it. It was decimated to less than 50% of what it was before. My back bulbs haven't ever really quite recovered from that because it just went gung-ho on its newest growth of 2022, which is just horrendously enormous. I mean, this is the bulb from last year right here. And even if this one starts to shrivel down in size once it is fully matured, it's still going to be a third, if not 40% larger than the previous one. The whole orchid goes all the way up there. <laughs> and it is a thirsty one. Every second day, I am still watering it. I saw signs of yellowing of the leaves at the base, so I've already taken those off but it's still super thirsty. And well, I'm not gonna give you a dry pot until, you know, more things start to happen that make it very, very clear that, you know, it's time to stop watering. Amazing. This is something I never expected from this orchid this time around. I was gonna settle with a smaller pseudobulb and no blooms, but now I have expectations. <laughs> Look, if it doesn't bloom, that's absolutely fine. The orchid has grown exponentially beyond any expectations that I had after the Great Divide. Next to it, I have Chunya Good Life, number one. Oh, it is going to be a beaut. I don't know if you can see it, but the sheath is cracking open here. It is so fat and chubby, I don't even want to touch it. I want to pretend I've never seen this, but I have been watching it for the past couple of weeks, and it is just going to be magnificent. Two, maybe three buds in Chunya Good Life, number one. Yes! <laughs> and you would say, ew, that looks ugly. Oh, but the treasures that it bears, the treasures that it bears. Now, my Cattleya Dinar Blue Heaven <clears throat> is not exactly on time, but for me, any blooms are right on time. It grew beautifully. I am hoping that all the buds that are in here are fine. I know the sheath looks discolored, so that's giving me room for concern. 
but it's not wet and anything in here is now getting air because yesterday it cracked open which is fabulous Ah, oh, good life and dinar blue heaven it, oh my goodness again i ignore i pretend i don't see it and then one day hopefully i will raise that curtain and go hello hello beautiful tucked away in the sea of green chartreuse green leaves everything good that i like to see here is my francis fox look at this can you see it who's photobombing you there uh that little sheath is extending whether we have enough time to see it bloom, I do not know, but this orchid is doing so much better this year than it did in any of the other years I've had it. Whether it was afflicted with Fusarium or not, we have at least got ourselves a nice root system this season and a nice growth that is also trying to bloom. Now it's just a race against time and the elements. This is where it's going to get a little crowded. I'll do my best. Back here is my golf green hair pig. Check this out. I'm going to try and see if you can check this out. Which, which leaf is in the way? Let me see. Let me see. I want you to see this sheath. Look at that. Look at this. Ah. <laughs> oh, golf green hair pig. Very special orchid. Has been through a lot. Been divided, etc. But super reliable. And what a stonker of a sheath. I don't know when it's going to bloom out. I am hoping that we will still get a bloom, even just one. It is a marvelous, beautiful green bloom that I thoroughly enjoy. I love my green chartreuse orchid blooms and it smells gorgeous. So yay, we got ourselves a sheath there. If I slowly do a little twist again, like we did last summer with my Lelia Pacavia, you can see one new growth right here. Ooh, let's twist again, like we did last year. And there's another new growth right here. Now, granted, there's two pieces of the Pacavia in this pot, but it's nice to see that both pieces are growing their new growth and doing it so soon after blooming. And I say so soon after blooming because, you know, orchids like to take a rest, but these hybrids, they always do such a great job in performing. Just making sure that I don't see any scale because I am going through all my orchids at the moment giving them preventative treatments to make sure that when they come indoors, everything is going to be fine. And, you know, when I see white bits and pieces on the leaves, huh, I just want to make sure that they're all dead. And it appears to be the case. It never hurts to check, though. Let's go on to something else. And let's see if we can't find ourselves some other goodies in here. There you can see the new growth of my Lelia Tenebrosa, an orchid that has never bloomed for me. But goodness me, she is growing, her, you know, she's doing her thing, one new growth at a time, and I'm loving the size of this new growth. I'm not saying it's a blooming size new growth, but goodness me, what if, huh? And this is the 2022 growth of my pastoral innocence, the one that was about to be a first-time bloomer for me. Um, yeah, buds blasted. I had three gorgeous candle-like buds on this one, and they just went poof, yellow. Anyway, the growth is looking fabulous. There's nothing wrong with the orchid. I've got the same height for the next growth as I did previously. Maybe there's hope. Maybe one day we'll see big, big, white, pristine orchid blooms on this one. Floofy, of course. A very promising new growth on my Purpurata variety striata. I'm loving this. Full-on fertilizer. Everybody that is in active growth is getting full-on 300 parts per million fertilizer regardless of the time of year and regardless of what's around the corner. While they've got light, while they're in active growth, I am pumping it into them. And that beautiful spray of white belayman that you see going down into the pot is my golden cellar, the one that we discovered had Fusarium in it. Not just because of a pseudobulb cleanup early in the season, not just because of a division, but also because of a division that we did when we did the root bulb cleanup. And it was very concerning that the purple ring had already progressed very, very well into the rhizome. Ah, yeah, any stress in Fusarium can reactivate, but check out those rays of sunshine, what I like to call it. Or, you know, like you get the fireworks as it rains down after the big bang. Yeah, I got myself a big bang. And this is my fireworks display. Beautiful volume and I love it. For the fourth go around, my mailman did not deliver on any blooms. But again, 
I want an orchid to live. I'll try to figure out why I can't get it to bloom, maybe in 2023, but oh, it is growing new roots. And that is just, you know, what you say, well, if you can't get the blooms, get yourself some roots. And that is what this orchid is doing right now. We'll have those roots in the pot before she has to come inside. Ah, we'll have her up and running. She's gonna be okay. No blooms, but you know what? Ah, roots, me and roots. I'm always happy to see roots. I'm begging your forgiveness of the dusty leaves of my happy holiday. Not dusty though, is that gorgeous sheath in the back there? Let's just see if there's something inside. Can I feel anything? Yep, we've got a little bit of a bulge. So that's already gonna be sometime maybe end of October. We'll see those gorgeous blooms again. And we'll also be able to see if the orchid got enough light this year to be able to give us that gorgeous flare in the blooms. And way in the back here, is my Lelia perinii. I hope I can show this. I've got my flamingo buds again. Two buds on my Lelia perinii, even though the growth never ever grows to size for me as when I received the orchid, but she is a reliable bloomer, even though she's one of the biggest orchids I have occupying my shelf space, and yet her blooms will only last 10, 11 days. But we have ourselves some buds which is not something I can say for the mailman. <laughs> Lelia perinii very, very rarely blasts its buds on me. And I feel that she too is a little bit late in the season, but better late than never, as they say, right? So I moved my Digbiana around a little bit. Let's see if I can show you on camera. Look at this. I only got one bloom from her earlier in 2022. This growth is definitely a blooming size growth. I don't understand why my second lead has stopped blooming. For two years in a row, I had two blooms and then nothing in her last blooming. So the growth is fine, but it hasn't got the same shape and appearance as this one. But I'm happy to see this orchid back in active growth. Being a warm to hot grower, it always amazes me that the warm to hot growing orchids find themselves doing somewhat nada that the naked eye can see <laughs> during the hot season where you'd think, yay, it's hot. It should be growing by now. <laughs> but anyway, I love me my Digbiana and those growths. Hmm. Even the coloration, everything about it. Beautiful. Oh, and after just having reprimanded my Digbiana for, you know, snoozing through the summer while it is a warm to hot grower, Lelia purpurata striata, look at this growth. She bloomed for me the first time in this year, 2022, and got repotted and root ball clean up the whole nine yards. And here we are. The next new growth is already so far advanced. Quelle surprise, I love it. From I'm loving it too, this is not happening and I'm not wasting any alcohol. I just thought, why are you so curled up? Look at this infestation in this leaf. Thank goodness it's an old leaf because I'm not messing around. Look at all these crawlers in here. Uh, 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 uh. I am glad we're doing this together. Let me just put some alcohol on my fingers. No way am I having crawlers on my fingers. I'm just going to take this off right at the leaf joint or thereabouts. There we go. What a mess. This is so not happening. What a mess. Oh, this is so not happening. But isn't that amazing? I have treated this orchid. She was ready for a leaf shine, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, life got in the way and booyah, we found ourselves a colony. But they are history. Sorry about that. Suddenly this is becoming an orchid chores diary as opposed to let me update you on the shelves of the east side, but there we go. That took care of at least that colony, and when that orchid's turn is to have a leaf shine, I can double check and make sure that we're not getting another infestation on her. My goodness, I was also just showing the sheath and it didn't occur to me until I looked over when I pulled the Lelia purpurata. I thought, why is that leaf so curled? Well, it was a nuisance growth anyway. You can see I needed to support it. <laughs> it's gone and they gone. Right, I have a few more. Let's get them on the table though, because if I bend down, I may not get up. Considering the amount of wind that I have had here on my patio, guess who never flew out of their pot? Hey, hey, hey. 
I did an orchid chores diary very, very early in the season, and this poor orchid had been established in her pot, or tried to be, several times, and kept getting blown out. This time she got wired in, bonsai styli. Anyway, this is my Myrmecophila tibicinus, and she is doing great after all the abuse, after getting blown away constantly. So here we have a new growth, whoops, right there. It's a bit tough with the background noise to try and stop what I'm doing while gates close. Anyway, this is her new growth right there coming from yonder. There we go. That's it right there. No size decrease on that lead. And right here, I have another new growth, which will probably have a similar size as the previous one right here. And they can settle in and grow roots and just be happy. This is a big bull that also has, you know, self-watering, which looks nasty right now. You, clearly, you can see that I haven't gotten to this orchid yet. Still dusty, but I like her in a way like this. She looks so rugged. I don't have any ants in her, but two new growths because Porfin, we could just leave her alone and she wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> Why didn't I think of this before? Because right behind her, let me show you the Mimicophila Thomsoniana. Let me get her into... There we go. Yes, I know. <clears throat> one day. I only had one day that was 39 degrees Celsius. And it was the hottest day of August. But only one. And booyah. You know, bright light orchid and all that business. But <clears throat> no humidity, no airflow. And singe those leaves, why won't you? There we go. But hey, also wired in because finally <laughs> she can also rest easy. Even though she was doing well in a pot that was, you know, the standard round pot, self-watering pot that I have. Once you wire one Mimicophila in, how much is it going to take to wire two in? So here we have a beautiful growth. That's the one from this lead. I like the size of it. I still haven't achieved the new growth size that I achieved in my first year with her, which is that one. Very, very large. Still working on it, but you know, if you keep bothering orchids, they always have to start again. Just leave them alone. And then back here is the other one. That's always been the smaller side of the leads, but there we go. Now, if you're seeing my pseudobulbs and are going, yikes, they're rotting. Nope, none of that is the case. They are as firm as you can be. If I bonk somebody over the head with them, it feels like a club. So they're fine. Just the normal evolution of a Myrmecophila. So while it doesn't look really nice on those pseudobulbs, c'est la vie, it's the way it is. Finally, the orchid can settle in. And let me just go back to the Tibicinus because here's an angle that I can show you with a nice shiny new root coming out, growing into the media, and she is not going to fly away. <laughs> happy days. Anyway, that was my update. I hope it was quick enough. I hope it wasn't too quick. I hope it wasn't rushed. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more, anything more specific. I still have the lower shelf, but we'll leave that for another day. Maybe the day that I'm going to do orchid chores. I don't know. So much to do. And I feel like I'm losing the race. So <laughs> I'm going to love and leave you. I'm going to go back to polishing orchids. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a beautiful day on one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye. No, 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 no. Don't go. Wait, wait. Ah, I can't believe this. Cartwheels. Cartwheels are on the patio. I'm telling you, roller coaster ride in the orchid hobby. Before I even did this update, I checked to see who I should feature because, you know, marvelous sheaths and buds. And I looked at my Lelia amethyst and I thought, yeah, still nothing. And just now, when I said goodbye, I went back and checked all the growths just to make sure I'd covered everything. <gasps> this is what I saw just after I said goodbye. This is a bud, you guys. Look at this. If she blooms out, if we are on time, if nothing happens, <laughs> this would be a first time bloomer. I mean, she is growing superbly for me. Really, this orchid is growing well, but honestly, I don't know if that's another spike right there, but if this one is going to bloom, I just couldn't uh, like walk away and say, nah, <laughs> I've already said goodbye. I had to add this clip. Oh, I'm going to hurt myself here with my cartwheels. <laughs> oh, so excited. Keep your fingers crossed for us, please. Thank you. See you. Bye.